Welcome back to Level Head in Mind, where we provide you with mental health education to empower you to make well-informed decisions about your mental health care. In today's video, we're going to be talking about bupropion or Wellbutrin. And bupropion is an atypical antidepressant that is FDA approved to treat major depressive disorder, seasonal affective disorder, and smoking cessation. So it helps you to quit smoking as well. It's an atypical antidepressant because it works differently than your typical antidepressants like the SSRI. You see, it has no direct action on serotonin. Instead, it is an NDRI or norepinephrine and dopamine reuptake inhibitor. So it acts on dopamine and norepinephrine which can have some stimulating effects that's very beneficial if you have that type of depression where you have lack of energy and lack of motivation. However, these stimulating effects can produce some side effects, such as increased heart rate, increased blood pressure, insomnia, irritability, headaches, and a little shakiness or tremor. However, just like other antidepressants, these side effects will typically resolve in about a week of taking the medication. So if you just started taking bupropion and you're experiencing some of these side effects, give it a good week and they should subside. Other common side effects include dry mouth, nausea, perhaps some vomiting, and weight loss. Wait a minute. What did she say? Yeah weight loss, which is one of the many reasons that bupropion is very versatile. You see, other antidepressants will typically cause weight gain by making you crave more foods, typically carbohydrates. Bupropion actually causes weight loss by decreasing those cravings. And when combined with naltrexone, it's actually FDA approved for the treatment of weight loss. Now, bupropion has other off-label uses that are very useful, such as treatment-resistant depression. So if you're taking an antidepressant, for instance, sertraline, and it seems to be treating your depression fairly well, except you still have that lack of motivation and low energy, adding bupropion can actually help get you out of that Slump. And in fact, this combination is very common and coined well off for Wellbutrin and Zoloft combination. It is also used in combination with mood stabilizers to treat treatment resistant bipolar depression. And when you treat bipolar depression, you must use antidepressants very cautiously, if not at all. However, if you have bipolar depression and you're not getting better with a mood stabilizer alone, using bupropion comes with a lower risk of inducing mania, where other antidepressants have a higher risk of inducing a manic episode. Another off-label use for bupropion is that it treats sexual dysfunction, whether that be sexual dysfunction alone or sexual dysfunction caused by taking an antidepressant. So adding bupropion to your antidepressant treatment can also help if you have a low libido. Sometimes patients will also switch altogether to bupropion to avoid the side effect of decreased libido. Another versatile and off-label use of bupropion is the treatment of ADHD. You see, by acting on the dopamine and norepinephrine system, it can actually help improve executive function, and by doing so, helps improve attention, focus, and concentration. However, bupropion is non-addicting. You see, amphetamines are highly addicting because amphetamines and stimulants are dopamine-releasing drugs. So they actually release dopamine into your system, whereas bupropion is a dopamine reuptake inhibitor, inhibiting the release of your own body's dopamine, increasing your own level of dopamine. But the inhibition of this system is considered to be weak, and so bupropion is considered to be non-addictive. 
However, the increased dopamine that is found in the mesolimbic system or the reward pathway is just enough to help decrease your cravings for nicotine and food, which is how bupropion helps with smoking cessation and weight loss. So bupropion has many functions and is very versatile, but it's not for everyone. It does come with a risk for seizures. However, all the antidepressants come with the risk of seizures. But bupropion got a bad rep because when it first came out in 1989, the max dose was 900 milligrams. And what they found was that patients who were bulimic were having seizures. So they took it off the market and they figured out that the seizure risk was dose dependent. And so they reintroduced bupropion in 1989 with a contraindication for patients with seizure disorder or bulimia. Now the seizure risk is low. It's 0.1% risk with the sustained release and extended release formulations when dosed less than 300 milligrams total per day. That risk increases to 0.4% if the sustained release or extended release formulations are dosed greater than 400 milligrams a day. The immediate release formulation risk is also 0.4% as long as the immediate release total dose is less than 450 milligrams. However, if you go above 450 milligrams on the immediate release, your risk now jumps to 4%. So it's not recommended to take doses of bupropion greater than 450 milligrams. And caution should also be taken with patients who may have risk of seizure due to things like anorexia, head trauma, alcohol or benzodiazepine withdrawal, or patients who are taking other medications that may decrease the seizure threshold, which is why if you're taking bupropion, you should do so under the direction of your psychiatric provider since we are well versed on the contraindications and potential drug interactions that can occur while taking bupropion. So, are you taking bupropion? or any other medication that you would like us to cover, please leave that in the comment section below because we'd like to continue making videos that impact your mental health journey. I thank you for watching and I'll look forward to seeing you next week.